I've almost been avoiding recording Video Spirit because of the nature of the Spirit of God, the impact that this study has had on my life personally, how much challenging it's been, as well as how much I've grown in the knowledge that I was amazed because I've I've studied of the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit practically all my life, really, as far as being a believer. Because when I first got saved, you know, we had the Holy Spirit series. I mean, you know, Chuck had just barely recorded it, and we were passing it out, you know, regularly. And there was the two different Holy Spirit series that we could, you know, give to people. And we all heard it, you know, we all were blessed. And, you know, I had lots of interesting experiences in learning and knowledge about what God was teaching me at the time about the Holy Spirit and about how he operates in the life of the believer in the world and all those kind of things and how people were, because of the generation that I'm a part of, you know, how like Vineyard had gotten you know, kind of off on their ideas going one direction and Chuck was going a different direction about the Word of God as opposed to the experiences of God and now we have the same problem coming up in a different way where people are talking about experiencing God as opposed to, you know, the Word of God. And there should never be that conflict. It should be cooperatively working together to reveal or unveil a greater whole. And so wanting to communicate that fact, you know, I've avoided sometimes, you know, doing things to be in the right spirit, so to speak, of how he wants to be revealed. Because you see, people get carried away about things of the spirit. They get wrapped up caught up and emotional about the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God himself is a person. He has feelings. He has emotions. He has the capability to cause us to understand things in a way we never would have understood them any other way. He has the ability to change us, to recreate us, to make us, to inspire us, to fill us, to really blow us away, and to do all kinds of things that really are wonderful and supernatural in his being, but all are used for one purpose, and that's to reveal Jesus or to reveal the Father, either one. Because if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Jesus is the personification of the Father himself. In other words, if you want to see the Father, look to Jesus, because Jesus is of the, the nature of God himself, love, but also of the personification of who God is, if you want to see a physical representation of God, you know, on earth, you'll see Jesus. But you won't see, really, the Father himself stand up as a person and say, hey, here I am, I got gray hair, you know, and I'm a beard, you know, and I'm kind of this guy. Nor will you see the Spirit stand up and say, hey, you know what, I'm a dove, or I'm a, you know, raging inferno, or whatever, you know, because the physical representative of the nature of God, or the Spirit of God, is Jesus. In other words, they are three separate beings, yes. That's obvious. I mean, they even communicate and talk to each other. But they don't physically represent themselves here on Earth in any other way except for the Son represents the Father. So when you look to the Father, you see Jesus. When you look to the Spirit, you see Jesus. Because the Spirit said that, or Jesus said that the Comforter, when he has come, would not speak of himself, but he would reveal me. And that gives me great comfort because that's what the Holy Spirit's job is, to reveal God. Now, I know people get that confused because they go, well, no, to reveal Jesus. Well, yeah, Jesus is God, and Jesus is the Son of God, and he's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, you know, you kind of learn. But I kind of slowed down on teaching of the Spirit of God because I was dealing with personal sin in my life, personal issues that I wanted to address because... I moved into kind of like a holiness with God, the Spirit, that I felt intimidated, you know, kind of needed to pull back and pull away because I was discovering who He is in a more intimate way than I ever had before, and it was inspiring. I mean, it was awesome. It was like, wow, this isn't what we learned in the Holy Spirit series. <laughs> and God has been taking us through that in using the book that, you know, Chuck's come out with the uh, Living Water series, you know, the book, and using that as a platform, you know, to 
expound and expand upon that which is being taught so that we could relate it in a more intimate way you know between you and i and also the god that we are talking about meaning the spirit of god that he could manifest himself to you personally in a way that would also do so for me so we both would learn together something new and something old something not borrowed and something blue but something that god is wanting to reveal in these latter days so that we would be enticed as well as inspired to go on with jesus not to just think we know it all and there's no more to be said or no more to be learned there's always more to learn there's more in heaven on earth that could be said but even the volumes that are already written would not contain all the words that jesus said we are told in the gospels and that's true of god himself there's not enough time in the universe to reveal all that god is but in this study we've been doing that and discovering all kinds of interesting unique things about the spirit of god and so now bringing it back up i've been sitting here this morning after recording a very intense uh video light and it was very good it was very wonderful to see how god was going to reveal himself in what he wanted to be said that that particular message and i've been listening to the turtle doves and they've been cooing all morning they even came up and alighted even as the light came on as i said alighted upon the porch up ahead and as i said alighted by the way just so you know when we're talking about supernatural the light popped on that type of coincidence that happens exactly the moment without there being forethought planning or some kind of coordinated effort is how we're discussing the supernatural part of the spirit of god in this section in this segment it's where is he leading you to or where is he leading and only a god or only the god that can arrange and knows all circumstances of our lives in our lives could cause when i use the word alighted cause the light to come on. only god as god could use the ministry of there being turtle doves all around me cooing to draw me outward to teach on the holy spirit to say now is the time and confirm it through circumstance as well as his word and i like that because you see for me it makes every moment of my life meaningful it means every decision in my life specifically detailed to the nth degree and when i say the nth degree i mean all the way out to decimal points that even pi can't cover and that's covering a lot so if you want to pursue god with all your heart soul mind and strength and know god in a more intimate personal way than you've ever had before that's what these specific studies on the holy spirit are about to go beyond that with which you think you know to expand your mind into an area you don't know and that we have to accept from god as being his ability to make us whole in the grasping of principles and ideas and thoughts and and perspectives that come from the word of god that are the word of god as he reveals them to us so i do pray that the holy spirit right now would literally close your eyes if you're not open to it to block your ears if you're not receiving it that he would stop you right now from even watching the video because it's not that we're teaching anything weird i mean to me it's like the most natural thing in the world because we're talking about heaven we're talking about things that are not of the earth we're talking about the domain of the spirit of god that with which god himself dwells in and of that nature and of that person i love how he uses that part of his personality to make it so real in this physical world that miracles a coincidence circumstantial of supernaturality that cause even the very light that comes on from my plant to pop on the moment i said the word a light so that i would use that as he is the light and that we would be walking in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship one with another because that's why god started this study for me and for you God started this study for me because I already know I thought more about the Holy Spirit than many of my peers and yet 
even as much as I knew, I, I knew that I didn't know all because there were things that I started to study with that I said, hey, you know, at the beginning of this tape series, I even said, look, there are things that, you know, we won't know, but we'll go through it and discuss it. And I'll admit to you that we don't know. Like the seven spirits before the throne of God, you know, what are the seven spirits before the throne of God? According to the word of God, they are the seven spirits before the throne of God. That's all. We don't know that they are the Holy Spirit. Seven number completion, you know, you can play with that as you will, you know, and choose to use it as a manifestation of the completeness of God if you want to. But it doesn't say that he is. As a matter of fact, we do know that the Spirit of God is a person. And we've been, you know, reading about that and using that as our foundation to move on in order to examine some of the things that we don't know and to, you know, throw them out there and say, let God reveal. And so that's how God revealed to us that the person when you want to see Jesus in a, when you want to see the Spirit of God in a physical person, you look to Jesus because Jesus is the one with whom the Spirit is overflowing or is full of the Holy Spirit. Some say Holy Ghost. So, coming to that place of peace today, coming to that realization that, wow, everything is like, everything has become still. Everything has become calm. I even fell asleep. I took a nap. And I lay down and was out dreaming. No, I didn't dream of God. I just dreamed weird dreams. <laughs> you know, like this one was about a slinky, you know, playing this game. It made no sense at all. It was like kind of, what, what? You know, I was like, there's no interpretation here. It's just, you know, goofy, you know. And it was, it was interesting. You know, it was kind of cute, you know. I have had dreams that have meaning. I have had dreams that have purpose, you know, design. But this is just a goofy dream, you know. Goofy dreams are goofy dreams. <laughs> Sometimes they're the combination of inputs and data. But as we learn of the Spirit of God, we need to have ears to hear what the Spirit would say to us. As we discover and uncover what the Word of God speaks to us, we need to have understanding enlightened to us or quickened to us by the Spirit of God as He gives us the ability to understand what we're reading. Because if we don't, then we're only getting a physical application of a spiritual principle. And the Bible is full of spiritual principles as well as physical applications of a spiritual principle that will work out in your life. Why can some of these people, you know, pay their 10% and get blessed out of their mind? Because God's a debtor of no man. He's not going to deny those people their reward now. They may not get much more than what they've already gotten, but then again, that's between God and them. But understanding spiritual principles and using it in a practical way, there's a certain part of manipulation there that's acting as God themselves or recipients from God. And it's a careful weighing of the balances in the scales of what God is revealing to that person in their learning curve that applies only as the Spirit of God reveals it. Because without you having a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom about where that person is coming from, you can't claim that somebody who's like into kind of word of faith or something else because of their weakness of their relationship with the Lord, that they're not saved. No. As a matter of fact, the only one who can make a determination of salvation is God himself. It's not for us to declare a person unsaved or saved. We can say that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that without the salvation of Jesus provided to the atonement and sacrifice of the Son of God on the cross, you can't be saved. Or we can determine a lot of issues of the superficiality of people in general looking on the outward things, though we can't see the heart, according to 1 John, then we can apply to that the principles that we're told and have this fellowship with a person possibly because of those issues that we see that 1 John related to us. But does it determine in reality whether a person is saved or not? No, it doesn't. Because the salvation is in and of itself by grace, given by God, not by ourselves. We can't apply grace to a situation except for the grace with which we were given and share that same grace that we've received from God to give to others from God so that they too likewise would receive the comfort with which we were comforted. And so the Spirit of God doing this to us giving us eyes to see, giving us understanding, giving us ears to hear what he would say, that allows us to move out of the physical dimension into the spiritual reality of 
this book being more than a book, the word being more than a word, that we can say that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, because it's literally a spiritual manifestation of something that's going on in the realm of the dimension that we cannot see, but the realm that God lives in and exists and has his being. And so, as we move forward, then I pray that God would remove from you all sin in your life, that he might purify you as he does me and cleanses us from all sin as we confess our sins before the Father and we are forgiven by the actions that the Son has done for us. In that way we might be not so limited to see through a dark glass perceiving only those things that we can see barely but rather that God would open up the windows of heaven and reveal to us clearly those things that we can see Him doing even as Jesus prayed that we should have that same type of relationship with our Father as He had and as He wants us to have with the Spirit of God as the Father has sent the Comforter to us so that we would receive the things of the Spirit and know that they are from Him and not from ourselves. So in so doing, we need to have a foundation. We need to have some words. We need to have a direction in which we're going. And so, where is He leading you? How are you going? Where are you going? What are you doing? When you walk with the Spirit, developing your relationship with Him and respond to His work in you, it is very likely you will begin to have all kinds of glorious, supernatural experiences. Sometimes there will be no response more appropriate than weeping. At other times there will be tremendous joy or overwhelming love. Many kinds of responses are possible as we walk in the Spirit and as we allow ourselves to be led by Him. It is always glorious to realize that God's hand is upon you, guiding you along the right route. Of course, at the time as the event begins to come together, it suddenly dawns on you... Oh, okay. Of course, at the time you may not always recognize His Spirit's guiding hand, but as the event begins to come together, it suddenly dawns on you God is leading you. Several years ago, I was called upon to visit a lady from Calvary Chapel who had broken her back in a serious car accident. I went to St. Joseph's Hospital to pray for her, and soon discovered that her six-bed ward there was two other women also from our church. God had planned it so that I was able to minister to all three of them. I didn't know the other two were there, but when I walked in, each of them got excited and thought I'd come to visit her. I prayed for them all. As I was leaving the room and walking back to the elevator, I couldn't contain my excitement. Lord, I love your efficiency, I said. I don't know how many rooms there are in St. Joseph's Hospital, but they're an awful lot. But you're so efficient, Lord, you put the three ladies from Calvary in the same room so that I could get all three with one visit. That's great, Lord, I love it. I got in the elevator and pushed the button for the ground floor. But when the door opened and I looked out, I knew I was lost. I had arrived at the nurse's station, not the lobby. So I stepped back in, thinking someone else must have stopped the elevator on that floor. But when I looked up at the indicator light, the G for ground floor was lit up. I was really confused now. A nurse saw my confusion and said, Are you looking for the lobby? Yes, what did they do with it, I said. You took the service elevator, she said. I looked up and there was a sign as big as life, Service Elevator Employees Only. Oh, I'm sorry, I said. I wasn't paying attention upstairs. That's all right, she reassured me. Well, how do I get to the lobby? Well, it's very simple, she replied. Just go down to the first hallway, turn right, and then you'll be right in the lobby. I thanked her, and as I walked away, I thought, oh, man, what a dumb mistake. That was stupid. As I turned down a short corridor, there was a girl standing and weeping. She looked up and saw me and screamed, Chuck! <laughs> Immediately, she came running up to me and began to sob hysterically. When I finally got her calmed down sufficiently, I asked, What's wrong? What can I do? Tell me. Let's pray. What can we pray for? Chuck, my dearest friend in the whole world, a man who led me to Jesus Christ is this very moment having brain surgery. This man is such a wonderful Christian. He's been a missionary in Africa, was sent home to have the surgery. The doctors give him very little hope for being able to walk again. He has a brain tumor that they think has already affected his walking ability, and they feel that, and then she broke off in tears. Chuck, I can't bear the thought of such a beautiful man of God being crippled 
I'm just devastated. God enabled us to pray together. I gave her some scripture and pointed her to Jesus. I was so desperate, she told me after having we had finished, I was just here praying, God, I can't handle this. Please send someone along to help me to pray with me. She stopped for a moment, then continued, and when I looked up, here you came along down the hall. Right then the light went on for me. My mistake wasn't merely a stupid error or some bad turning or wrong directions. God had prepared the whole scenario. And I suddenly had the realization, God's hand is on me. He's leading me by the Spirit. I have said the basis of the entire ministry of Vidibo is that we should hear his voice. That Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. That there is no aspect of God in the scripture that isn't accurate to the very details of the counting of the hairs on your head, to the very nature of the world that we live in. Whether it be through hurricanes, whether it be through floods, whether it be through tornadoes, or whether it be the voice of God coming after all of these things and speaking to you. The direction of a man's heart is his own, but his footsteps are ordered of the Lord. So we know that every detail of your life, that before the foundations of the world your name was written therein, has been organized, has been coordinated, has been planned. There is no accidents in life. There's no, oh, some people have their life, you know, like working the right way. No. There is a greater being than anything you've ever imagined before in your life. There's a greater entity that's greater than everything we can logically put together and even call it life. There's something so magnificent and wonderful and so beyond our comprehension that every little nuance of this life has already been coordinated, planned, and is acting out and happening as he wills, not as we will. Everything. Not one detail. Not a sparrow falling from the sky. Not a bird building its nest. Not the lilies of the field growing in the valley. All so clothed as the Father has done and made by him. And yet still having their being as the sun rises and the stars come out at night. So too we are told that God's will is done and that everything would happen according to his will. When I read those, I read over them easily saying, well, yeah, well, that, that's fine. Until suddenly, being led by the Spirit of God and walking in the Spirit, then my eyes are open to the reality of what that word means, of what that Bible scripture said. Those details are that detailed? You mean to tell me every moment whether I sneeze Please, act in sin or act righteous is planned? Yeah. Everything. From the moment that I said this light enlightened and it flipped on at the exact same time to the very nature of when I didn't want to teach anything and I couldn't seem to come up with what I wanted to do today because it was so peaceful, God wanted to reveal something today. Peace the peace that he gives. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. He wanted to bring us both to a place of contentment. You see, you can't be content when you don't know that there's a reason for the things that are happening. It's easy to write a book and call it The Purpose Driven Life and to see that there's something behind everything going on and to accept that you know you have a purpose but it's quite magnificent and supernatural and beyond your comprehension when you suddenly have the glorious realization that everything in your life has a purpose. That is why I'm a Christian. I'm not a Christian just because I got saved at some Jesus concert, because I did. And I had a wonderful, marvelous, emotional experience, because I did. But you see, all those things only led me to the place of having to deal with God one-on-one. -on -one. And if God was a man, I would have outfigured him and outsmarted him and already gone on to something else and been more interested in some other way than God himself. But when I use the word God, I don't use it the same way most of my peers do or most of my people that I grew up with, I believe, use it as I do. I use it as far as high as the heavens are above the earth, so too is his ways beyond my ways and his thoughts beyond my thoughts and his understanding beyond my comprehension because there is absolutely no way that I can ever come to the complete knowledge base that he exists in 
and operates from in every day of my life, as puny as that is, much less every other life that exists throughout all of eternity. And that's why I always say I'm the one that makes my use of the word God bigger, greater, and more omni than anybody else, because I make my G into a big G, my O into a big omni, and my D into a big deity, because it's bigger than I am. He is. And that's what the Holy Spirit has done for me, is that in the entity of who God is, I have seen him as greater beyond my comprehension, than lesser, and making him in my comprehension. Every time that we come to that place of thinking that we know God and we put him into a box, we find ourselves losing something of God and not appreciating all that God wanted for us to know, which was to grow more and more in intimacy so that we would walk in the cool of the day with him as Adam did. So that in the little delights that God brings your way, you would enjoy something as simple as a Pepsi and say thank you Lord I I love it that you love me so much that you've given me a which is a miracle to me it's still a miracle I just want to share with you that miracle of how supernatural God is in just stupid things 1.5 liter size Pepsi I'm a connoisseur of Pepsi I like Pepsi cans because you know they're very carbonated and I like the the one liter because one liter with the small neck has a certain amount of carbonation and flavor and syrup that's all mixed together in the right combo that you can open it and it won't lose its carbonation you can drink it and you'll still get you know kind of like the gas you know expiation so you could burp you know and kind of like get rid of all your gas inside and it'll eat it all up you know and flush it down the other way but the point is is that it's delicious it's perfect it's just the right combination and I used to be able to find those two for three dollars you know dollar fifty each you know with obviously with its own you know charges and everything else but then my wife and I we found a store that was selling these for one dollar 99 cents they're 1.5 liter they're a little bit bigger bottle and not quite the same amount but they taste better they last longer they're just the right size they're just the right price they're better than what I was drinking God gave those to me and they still which they normally sell for like gosh I don't know probably two dollars or something you know because they always mark it up when it's an extra half liter. But they're still selling it at the wrong price in a local store for the right person to receive it. Me. God's blessing for me. And that's what I see as the Spirit of God leading me and being led by the Spirit of God because as you do the work of God in your life, God will give you special little things that you can look on your life and say thank you be grateful for. It doesn't have to be something major, you know, like being healed or being, you know, stronger than your peers, like I've been at times, you know, when I was dying on the one hand, you know, just a few short years later, I was doing, you know, heavy lifting and moving things that most people couldn't even move, you know, when they were younger. How did I do that? I didn't. The Spirit of God in me did. And that's what makes my life why I choose to stay, why I choose to pray and obey and to follow hard after God because he's bigger than my life, because he's greater than my science fiction imaginary mind that can go beyond most people's comprehension of the Word of God because I will limit that comprehension within the confines of the Word of God, but I will also tell you that this Word of God, the Bible itself, in and of all the words that are written herein, that it itself could expand itself throughout the entire universe and it could cover every single nuance of anything that you could possibly imagine. It really can, because everything that's in here really has happened out here. I mean, when you just start in Genesis, you've already got everything covered. In the beginning, God, bingo, hello. From that moment on, it's all over. And that's why without there being our studying of the Spirit of God, if we don't grow in that knowledge of Him to let Him speak to us of God, to let Him reveal to us God, to have Him make known to us the Word of God, then we really don't know God at all. We have an idea of who God is rather than a reality 
of what he does, how he does it, and why he does it. Talk about a rush and about real excitement. I have been so excited about God's efficiency that on my way down to the lobby, I hadn't paid any attention to the signs over the elevator. But God used my oversight to get me down a certain corridor. Had I used the main elevator, I would have walked through the lobby and been gone. But God's Spirit directed me to a certain corridor to meet a need of a certain young girl who in utter desperation was crying out to God for help. And God misdirected me so that He could direct me. He will do the same thing for you. As you walk in the Spirit and continue in the things of the Spirit, you too will be blessed with exciting experiences that will thrill you to the core of your being. There will be absolutely no explanation, there is no karma, and there is no coinkadink or coincidence that you will not know immediately at that time as well as looking back on it forever that it was God's hand upon your life. You will see the power of God as you witness the various manifestations of the Spirit. It's always thrilling to be a part of what God is doing because God is in you. As exciting as they are, however, they aren't what we can they aren't what we are to look for. Ecstatic experiences can be wonderful, but they can never be our goal. You see, our goal, yours and mine, must always be to want more of God and for Him to have more of us. We need to want more and we need to give of ourselves more. That's what the Spirit wants as well. He wants a personal relationship with you that is warm, that is intimate, and it's growing and not just knowing. He wants to know you and be known by you. So, will you turn your life over to the Spirit of God? Will you walk with God today and talk with Him by His Spirit, in His Spirit? Oh, sure, we have many who say, Oh, I want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But do you know what that really means? I don't think so. If you journey along in this expedition as we learn more of the Spirit of God and how He operates, you'll find that there are things you did not know about a lot of the expressions you think you know or that you've used flippantly without realizing all that God intended for you to grow in the knowledge thereof, especially of the revelation of Jesus in a more intimate way, as well as His Spirit, which He's given us so that we would know the Father and be brought into the intimate relationship that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit have in heaven, in that spiritual dimension that we can know and experience for ourselves while here on earth, because the kingdom of heaven is about us, and it's in us, and it's yet to be revealed to us, and we will move into it one day, not with this physical body of flesh that we live in, but with the body that God has prepared for us, of a spiritual nature that will be prepared for the universe. Oh yeah. There's more in heaven on earth, heaven and in earth. More, There is more in heaven and more in earth and more of heaven and more of earth than has been revealed in this. And all the things that have been recorded would not be able to contain in all the universe of what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to you personally. 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 And how tender He wants you to become intimately really that tender, that closeness, that intimacy that you would forsake other things to have more of God in your life. That you would give up things in your life to have more of the reality of God in your life. That you would walk, talk, and be with God more than spending time watching something else like television or texting or just reading without there being the Spirit of God leading you. What is leading you today? Who's leading you? Are you misled? Or are you led by the Spirit of God? Father, I pray that you would move heaven and earth as you have. You put the universe in orbit. You put the stars in the sky. You put the sun and the moon in its place and you cause it to go in order. Likewise, you have created life and you have placed it in an order that you call by name in and of your own will the things determined to come about 
as life. And so each and every one of us that have life, we, God, thank you for that. But God, in that life, if it was only of the physical nature itself and without there being some kind of spiritual reality, we would only be like the animals and the plants having life, but having no nature of the Spirit. So God, I pray that now, by your Holy Spirit, you would cause life of the spiritual nature to come upon every single person, that they would live no longer after the flesh or after the nature, but rather become led by the Spirit of God as He reveals to us not only your Word and who you are, but who He is and how far we are in our comprehension of all that you have in store for us as we continue to grow up into the mature man of God, not just walking in and talking with God Himself, but being led by your Spirit, O oh God, as you choose to fill us to overflowing, that we would know what is the fullness of the stature of Jesus in our lives, because He has given us that Spirit that will touch our lives and touch the world for the eternity yet to come, that lives will be changed, and that we would be your light in a darkening generation. Thank you, Father, for giving us 